Hey everybody, it's Molly with All Ears and I'm here today with a brand new video. Today we are continuing our foodie series. We are doing a seafood throwdown. I am going to two table service seafood restaurants around Walt Disney World, two very different environments, two very different restaurants, two very different menus, even though they're both seafood, to see which one is the seafood king, see which one you should check out. So I hope you're ready, I hope you're excited. Let's get to fishing. Well, eating, not fishing. <sighs> The coral reef is an Epcot staple that has been around for a very, very long time. It is located attached to the Seas Pavilion near uh, the Seas with Nemo and Friends attractions and the uh, sea base where you can see the fish. But of course, the draw of eating here is this giant aquarium. You're gonna wanna request when you come and check in, just request if they can get you a, a tank table. They can't guarantee it, but you can sit right up next to this tank and enjoy all this gorgeous sea life, which of course I am loving because I love marine life. Of course, the menu here at the Coral Reef is seafood, but don't fear you're not gonna be eating things that you can see inside of the tank. Um, just their relatives, you know, from distant relatives. It's fine, it's not weird. Um, but of course the menu is seafood. You've got things like um, shrimp cocktail, lobster bisque as your appetizers. You've got some different roasted fishes, um, grilled fishes, mahi-mahi, salmon, you've got shrimp and grits. And then they also have some not seafood items as well. Um, they've got a steak, they've got a chicken, they've got a plant-based item. So if you're not a seafood eater, you can still come in here and find something um, and just wanna look at the tank. Uh, the kids menu, they've got the pick your own thing that they do a lot with kids, but they've got things like grilled shrimp and little pieces of fish as well as um, some more classic kid fare. But I did want to point this out that my server brought to me. I asked if they had a list of the kinds of animals in there. She said um, she doesn't know if this is still completely up to date with who's inside the tank here. Um, but some fun facts, the environment for the Seas of Nemo and Friends stretches 203 feet in diameter. Um, Spaceship Earth is 160 feet in diameter, which means it could fit inside here, which is wild. Um, that has 5.7 million gallons of seawater. Um, a standard swimming pool is 20,000. So, wow, this is huge. Um, one inch of water from the surface of the main environment could fill a swimming pool here at the Coral Reef. Um, and then the acrylic windows are eight inches thick so that you are, they can swim around in there. They don't have much distortion. Um, and then here are some of the fishes and the sharkies and all the creatures, the rays, turtles that you can look for um, while you're sitting here. So I'm, of course, most excited about the sharks. All right, first things first, this is the Coral Rita. Most of their beverage list is just the standard Disney beverage list where it's got the cocktails you can get all over at most Disney restaurants or Disney lounges. But they do have two specialty cocktails. This is the Coral Rita. Um, it's basically just a margarita with a fun name. And then they also have the Abyss, which is a vodka, blue curacao, and juice-based drink. Those are the two signature restaurants here. Or sig I'm sorry, signature beverages here at this restaurant. Okay, let's try this margarita. Pretty good margarita. I mean, just a standard lime margarita. It's got Cantrell and tequila. And it's fine, it's a normal margarita. I personally would tell you to just wait until you go to World Showcase. You can get a much better margarita, much more exciting drinks over around World Showcase. So if you're like, if you want a cocktail in Epcot, this is not why you come to the Coral Reef. So it's good, it's fine. If you want a margarita, I don't think you'll be mad about it, but there's definitely better cocktails and especially better margaritas out in the rest of Epcot. Though I don't get to look at sharks while I drink them, so that is a plus. Look at that sand tiger shark with his little mouth open. <gasps> Two sharks. Oh my gosh, y'all, this is the greatest meal I've ever been to. I don't even need to eat anything. I wish I could just come in here and not eat anything. No, that's rude. I. I'm not a huge seafood fan, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna have fun. I ordered the most popular things on the menu according to my server, so I'm excited to give them a whirl. But mostly I'm excited to sit here and keep watching sharks. <gasps> Look! There's a scalloped hammerhead. Ah! Oh my gosh, hello beautiful. I love you so much. Oh, we can't forget this angelfish down here. <gasps> I'm so happy. The appetizers are here. First of all, got some complimentary rolls and butter there, just some normal Parker House rolls. And then also the lobster bisque, highly recommended, um, very popular appetizer. You got a cream and brandy based lobster soup right there. 
let's try the soup. Mm. Very creamy, I can tell that, and it smells like, oh, look at that, look at that stingray. Am I going to be able to do this? I'm going to get distracted this whole time. This is going to be the longest review of all time. Um, it's very creamy and it very pungently smells like lobster, so. Mm. Okay, very strong lobster flavor, which I think is what you expect from a lobster bisque. Um, there are some pieces of lobster I'm finding in here. Let's take a look. If you kind of spoon around in there, there are some chunks of lobster meat. If I can get it on my spoon. There we go. Mm. Buttery sweetness that you expect when you get lobster. Very, very creamy. Um, that's good lobster bisque. I'm not a huge lobster fan, actually, weirdly. I know it's like one of the fanciest foods, but it's just not my favorite. But it's a very good creamy soup. I like it. I like it a lot, actually. I think this would definitely be a good thing to come in here and get... Um, if you like lobster, that's very good too. And the kids have it on a smaller portion as well. So, yeah, I actually am very much loving this. Mm. Creamy, sweet, no complaints. Also trying the rolls. They're just basic Parker House rolls, nothing exciting with just a little bit of butter. That tastes, that tastes like a roll with butter. So. It's not bad. It's it's actually a good roll, but it's just a bread with butter. I think it's exciting. I am trying two different entrees. These were the most popular choices from my server. Uh, this is the shrimp and grits. It's some grilled shrimp, cheddar grits, and a corn succotash. She said it has a little heat to it because um, there's some andouille sausage in there as well, so I'm excited about that. And then this is the mahi mahi. It is served over jasmine rice, and then it's got a um, pineapple and shrimp slaw and chutney on top of it. So both of those look pretty good. I'm not a seafood connoisseur. I will be very upfront with you. I don't love a lot of seafood, but I do like both shrimp and mahi mahi, so I'm excited to try that. We're gonna keep looking at the tank, at the angelfish and the guitarfish and the sandbar shark and the scallop head, scallop hammerhead, bonnet head. Look at that shark. There's a shark right there. Right there. And I'm right here just eating. This is great. Anyway, we're going to eat shrimp and grits now. Um, cheddar cheese grits, andouille sausage, corn succotash, and some grilled shrimps. It didn't go on the floor, don't worry. Not super spicy, but there's definitely a peppery and chili heat there. Getting a piece of the sausage. Mm. Ooh, yum. Okay, the trick is getting a piece of the sausage and the grits and everything all together. Because the sausage definitely does have a little bit of heat. It's that peppery Cajun heat. Really good grits. Not super, super creamy grits, um, but the shrimp is really good. They're grilled nicely. Got a good peppery flavor on there. Fresh corn succotash. Is this the best shrimp and grits I've ever had Disney World? No, it is not. Um, the Boathouse has very good shrimp and grits on their brunch. I would say that's probably the best one I've had offhand. But this is very good, and I'm glad they added this to the menu because um, when I, I came like a long time ago, and a lot of people know the Coral Reef has, it's just basically like just grilled fish, very simple, very standard. And so I'm glad they added this because it does have a lot more flavor and a little bit more excitement than some of their other dishes. So I'm definitely not mad about this dish at all. And I really like the little bit of heat from the pepper or from the sausage and the peppers. All right, look at that mahi. Does not look good. That just flaky fell apart. I'm going to get some of the grill. I love grilled anything. We're going to get some shrimp, get that beurre blanc, some of the pineapple relish, a little of the rice. We're just getting everything in one big magnificent bite. What a complex and interesting dish. Okay, here's the thing. I'm having a complex. The bite when you get it all together is good. The rice is cooked well. I like the, the pineapple and the beurre blanc. Um, the fish is good looking. And 
but when I eat the fish bite on its own, it is a little dry and chewy. And I don't know if that's because it does take me longer than a normal person to start eating because I have to take a bunch of pictures of it for the website and film it and stuff. So sometimes stuff, is, you know, like it's, it's a few minutes. It's not, but yeah, I'm not loving this fish. And it's not because it's fish. Because mahi-mahi is very mild. Good mahi-mahi I'm down with. And the rice and everything else is good. But taking a bite of that fish on its own, it tastes fine. It's just the texture is akin to overcooking mahi. Which I don't like saying because I don't like saying things are bad, but I have to be honest. So that's honestly what's happening. But this pineapple relish and the sauce is excellent. So again, it may be because it took me a few minutes to actually start eating it because I was eating the shrimp and grits first. Hi, Sharky. Hello. Um, oh, he's coming back. Hello. I love you too. He's so beautiful. Um, but I would say, I would definitely recommend the shrimp over the fish, in my opinion. But maybe you've eaten here. Maybe you had the mahi and it was delicious. So let me know in the comments. Because Disney restaurants can be very inconsistent that way. You can actually see a diver in the tank. They're feeding the fish right now. So if you get lucky, you'll get in here at lunchtime and you can see some divers swimming around and, and checking in on the fishies and dropping some food in spaces. Excuse me, how do I do that? I wanna go feed the fishies. And last but not least, we are finishing our meal with their signature dessert. This is the chocolate wave. It's a chocolate lava cake, a flourless cake, and then it's got a raspberry sauce and raspberry gelato. Look how big that one is. 10 out of 10 environment in here. Um, okay, so here's your chocolate lava cake. Look at all that ooey, gooey, yummy chocolateness. And then it's got the raspberry gelato on top of it and a raspberry sauce. I'm very excited about this. The divers like feeding the stingrays on the ground now. This is the greatest restaurant of all time. That is a lie to your face through the phone. But environment wise, I am in my element right now. Look at that. Look at him feed it. Look at it. He's getting some lunchies. This is amazing. People often ask me what I would do if I didn't do this, and my dream used to be a marine to be a marine biologist. This is amazing. He took his picture. Oh, selfie time. Oh my god, this is so cool. Also, look how big this ray is. Hi, you are beautiful. Yeah, look at your smile. Jeez. Ugh. I could live in here. Do you think they'd let me? I'll do the dishes or feed fish or something. Oh, he's measuring him. Oh, this is so cool. He's taking a little measurement. What do you think? You're smiling too. Hello, beautiful sand tiger. I love you. Ugh, this is so cool. A very cool thing about this restaurant, the seashells used here were harvested in farms under control of the Australian Ocean Authority and developed under a very strict environmentally sound program. So you'll see that this whole thing was made with shells, but it's great to know it was environmentally done and overseen. So pretty neat. So let's recap our meal at the Coral Reef restaurant. First of all, environment, 10 out of 10. Maybe not for everyone, but for someone that loves sea creatures like I do and little kids, I think it's a really awesome environment. I mean, you can just sit there and watch the fish. The fact that they got fed while we were in there, she said it happens around the same time every day, around 1, 1 1.30, so that was really, really cool and awesome. Everybody in there was ooing and aahing over the fish and how big some of those rays were. Environment, 10 out of 10. Some of the food was actually good. The lobster bisque was very good. The shrimp and grits was good. I'm not gonna say it was amazing, but the, the shrimp and grits was good. The dessert, if you're a chocolate fan, definitely very chocoholic and very simple and classic dessert no complaints there either the drink was good there's nothing bad about a lime margarita it just wasn't amazing um, and then unfortunately that mahi mahi just really wasn't very good so i had a little bit of everything but nothing was absolutely incredible oh my gosh so amazing and the biggest fault with coral reef is that it's here in epcot if this was in magic kingdom i would like it more because there's not amazing food at magic kingdom but there is amazing food here at epcot 
There, I mean, you've got World Showcase, you've got the festivals going on, so it'd be really hard for me to tell you to come eat at the Coral Reef when you could eat around World Showcase or eat at the Food and Wine Festival. Um, so that's my dilemma right now. Overall, I think if you want incredible seafood, this is not it. But if you want an incredible environment, this is pretty awesome. So it's really going to depend on you and your family and if this seems like something you want to spend money on. But it's definitely not over the top incredible best seafood you're ever going to have in your life. Um, but it is, again, I loved that tank. I could have literally sat in there for hours. But that's Coral Reef. Definitely leave your reviews um, and let us know in the comments what you think. Leave your reviews on All Your Set. And now we are magically going to go up here at another seafood restaurant in Walt Disney World. <laughs> Bubble effect. Bubble effect over. We are here at, oh, Bubble Effect keeps going. Thanks, kid, I'll hire you. Um, we are here at the Boathouse at Disney Springs. This is a signature restaurant, widely revered as the best seafood at Walt Disney World. So we are headed in for round two of the Seafood Throwdown. The Boathouse is located out on the water at Disney Springs. You can rent the Amphicars after. Not even if you're eating here. You don't have to eat here to eat the Amphicars, but it's fun to watch them as you're eating out on the water. They are known for their incredible oysters and seafood. And uh, we're gonna head in there for our second round of seafood here at Disney World. The Boathouse, obviously not quite the same decor as Coral Reef. Obviously there's no gigantic fish tank with fit, actual fish swimming around, but it is still really fun in here. There's a lot of different boats Boat parts around the restaurant. There's motors, there's actual boats, there's literally a boat sitting in the dining room. So it's still really fun, really inviting, really warm restaurant in here. I love the wooden touches. It's a little windy and rainy right now, but one of my favorite things about the boathouse is the outdoor seating as well as the dockside bar. Um, the dockside bar area is first come, first serve, but the um, outdoor seating is part of the seated area. And from there, you can watch those really cool amphicars go into the water, which are those like water boats that you can do here at the boathouse. I like going to the dockside bar. I went there recently in a great things to do without a park ticket video, and I had their signature craft beer that they make just for the boathouse at the dockside bar, so we can link that video for you. For my cocktail, I decided to go with the signature blueberry lemonade, um, and how gorgeous is this drink? It's like so pretty and pink. Um, and it is Stoli Blueberry, Western Sun Lemon Vodka, Homemade Lemonade, and Fresh Blueberries. My server said it wouldn't be too, too sweet, um, but he was really sweet and said he'd bring me extra club soda if it was a little too sweet. But he said it's got tartness for the lemons, so I'm excited to try that. Ooh! This is a perfect vodka drink for me. Definitely taste the lemonade. It mostly tastes like lemonade, so it's got that tart lemon flavor. Lemon's one of my favorites. And then a little sweetness from the blueberry. Definitely not too sweet. Definitely the perfect balance of tart and sweet for me. If you don't like lemonade or tart drinks, I'm gonna say skip on this one, but if you do want a refreshing, this would be perfect if it was nicer outside to sit outside on that patio. But this is a really good cocktail. Oh, that's so good. The Boathouse is also where you can get that, you've probably seen it on Instagram, very Instagrammable drink that has a little rubber duck floating in the top of it. Um, it's a super sweet drink, he warned me, which is why I didn't get it, but you can get that very Instagrammable cocktail here with a literal duck on it. Mm. But this is so fabulous. They have a great cocktail menu, full bar again, a signature beer that you can only get here brewed just for them. So definitely cocktail wise, we have a winner here. <laughs> we have the complimentary Parker House Rolls as well. So they come with the regular whipped butter and they're delicious warm Parker House Rolls, but my server is fabulous and he brought me over a little bit of the cinnamon whipped butter. This is what they have at the brunch here at the boathouse. They do a captain's brunch. I did it in the brunch throwdown. You can see that they drizzle that on top of the rolls and he was sweet and he said, here, I brought you something. So you can ask for that as well, but they've got delicious rolls to kick your meal off. First of all, whilst I would prefer to be looking at sharks, the soundtrack in here crushes. So they've got like a really good Hades jam sesh going. Um, but I'm going to have one of these rolls. That was just butter, but that's a darn good roll. It's just a Parker House roll, but it's really soft and yeasty. I love that whipped butter, so it's delicious. And now I'm going to try the uh, a little that cinnamon butter on this one. I'm very excited about it. 
That is so good. That was my like favorite thing at their brunch was the warm one of these with this drizzled on top. So excellent bread. Again, just Parker House rolls, but the cinnamon butter is amazing. Gotta ask for it. Taking a look at the Boathouse menu, one thing they're definitely known for here is their raw bar. They've got oysters you can't get anywhere else that are um, grown, picked, shucked, I don't know, made just for them, um, that are called the Lucky Ducks. Uh, they do some salads. They have a bunch of different appetizers, including a lobster bisque. They've got calamari, firecracker shrimp, coconut shrimp, clams. Um, they have some lighter things like sandwiches, burgers, shrimp tacos, I'm sorry, mahi tacos, lobster roll. Um, and then they do have a couple of seafood dishes such as tuna, grouper, salmon, sea and shore combinations here. And then they are partnered with Gibson Steakhouse out of Chicago. So they actually serve very, very good steak here as well if you wanted to go for a steak if you're more of a land as opposed to a sea person lots of big um, sides here these are all designed to share so you've got mac and cheese fries potatoes different varieties but they have a pretty robust menu and of course the focus is seafood for my start, I am going with their iconic firecracker shrimp. These are shrimp. They've got a sriracha mayo, serrano chilies, and sweet peppers. Um, and then it comes on a little bed of tortilla shrimps. There's a lime to squeeze on top. These are This is one of their signature items, and I'm so excited to eat it because he said, do you like spice? And I was like, yeah, I do. Let's do this. So I squeeze the fresh lime on there, and then you can see you've got your little shrimpies and some of those wontons for the perfect bite. There's that little bed of wontons under there, and I can't wait to eat this. This is one of their signatures. Mm. Oh my gosh, that has such good flavor. There's a little bit of heat and the chili, and then I'm loving the crunch from the little tortilla crisps under there. It's definitely not too, too spicy, but it has a good amount of heat. So if you're heat adverse, I definitely want to do this one, but I love that creamy sauce, love the crunch. I'm like having trouble talking about it because I want to keep eating it. This is phenomenal. Like maybe my favorite way I've ever had shrimp. Phenomenal. The heat is very manageable. I mean, it definitely has heat. So if you do not like spice, do not get this one. My mouth is warm, but it's flavorful heat. It's not just hot for hot sake. Super creamy. It's got a little bit of, a little hint of sweetness because of the peppers. This is fabulous. Oh my gosh. For my entree, I went with the chef recommended red grouper. This is a Gulf of Mexico grouper. Um, baby kale, new potatoes, red onions, cremini mushrooms, roasted red peppers, orange chili butter. He said the orange chili butter is unreal, amazing, delicious, and that it's gonna be a really fresh, flaky, um, pretty mild fish. So I'm excited to try it. It looks amazing, it smells amazing, and I don't know if I've ever eaten grouper. So we're in this together, friends. Oh yeah, oh my gosh, look at that orange butter just oozing. Yum. This looks amazing. Here we go. Mm. First instinct, that orange chili butter is unreal. You can definitely taste the sweetness from the orange. And that it does have a little bit of spice as well. It's a very mild fish, so I'm happy with that. Not super fishy, a little fishy on the back end after the orange flavor wears off, but very well cooked. Um, it's not dry like the pot he was at Coral Reef. Let's get a little potato in there. That orange chili butter, I'm gonna dip my bread in it. It is so good. Okay, this is a very well cooked piece, piece of fish. It's nice and flaky, but it's not dry. It's not super overwhelming fish flavor. You can really taste that chili butter, but then you do get that mild fish like texture. I'm gonna get a mushroom now. 
I can say without a doubt, no questions asked. This is way better than the Mahi or the Shrimp at Coral Reef. No, no competition. Now the Boathouse is a signature restaurant, which is Disney's word for fancy or expensive. So it's gonna be a little bit pricier than the Coral Reef. I don't find it to be outrageously expensive as compared to some other, social, uh, other signature restaurants. You can get some very expensive cuts of beef if you're gonna do steak. And of course they've got things like lobster tails which are gonna be more expensive. But most of your seafood entrees are gonna run around the, in the 20s to mid 30s depending on what you get. Looking at the dessert menu, my server said that his favorites are the key lime pie and the strawberry shortcake. Um, that the blueberry cheesecake's made in house. The others are, they're all huge. They do a big portion, but these two down at the bottom are designed to serve too. So they are gonna be gigantic pieces of cake and pieces of pie with a bunch of stuff on it if you've got a couple people with you. They do have some after dinner cocktails. And then on the back here, they've got a full list of whiskey and bourbon and scotch if you wanna do that as an after dinner cocktail. Here we go. I don't even have words. Just look at this dessert. Look at this freshly baked biscuit. That cream. This is bananas delicious. This is so good I want to cry. Like, one of the best desserts I've ever had at a restaurant at Disney World. There's only the restaurant desserts I'm kind of like, man, I'll go get a Mickey bar, I'll go get a Dole Whip, I'll go get something else. This is incredible. The fact that it's a biscuit, it's not a piece of cake, so it's not sweet on the premise. And then you've got that vanilla bean whipped cream, which is light, which is perfect, which is airy. The biscuit's nice and soft, and then you've got these fresh strawberries. This is amazing. One thing I like to point out as well is you can actually get a $25 discount on the Amphi cars, which are the cool cars um, out there that go on the lake if you eat at the boathouse. So bring your seat and you can save $25 on that. Wow, wow, wow. Overall, very dazzled by the boathouse. Per usual, I've never had a bad meal there, but that was definitely my favorite meal I've had there. The firecracker shrimp was amazing. That dessert was amazing. Service is always A+. Plus. So while Aviance, yes, it's cool to eat at the Coral Reef and I love looking at all the sharkies and the food wasn't bad for the most part and the service is good there too. If you're looking for good seafood and what you care about is the food, you're not gonna do better at the, than the boathouse at Walt Disney World. Well friends, that is a wrap on this seafood video. Definitely let me know what other foodie throwdowns you wanna see down in the comments. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social at All Ears Net. And until next time, I'm Molly, thanks for watching. Want to see more of my videos? Click over here. Want to subscribe? You can do that right here. And also, ring that notification bell to make sure you get instantly notified anytime we post a new video. Thanks for following. See you real soon.